what's up everybody this is tech g back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA tech plus certification exam so let's get into it in this video we'll cover the essential principles of security including confidentiality integrity and availability privacy considerations and key concepts like authentication authorization accounting and non-repudiation so by the end of this video you'll have a clear understanding of how these elements form the foundation of modern cybersecurity practices all right, so let's start with the CIA triad, which forms the backbone of security principles. In CIA, this stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So let's talk about confidentiality. So this refers to protecting information from unauthorized access or disclosure. In practice, this means ensuring that only those who have permission can view or use the data. And examples include encrypting sensitive data, using passwords, and employing access control measures. And a common analogy is locking a diary with a key to prevent others from reading it. And then we have what is called integrity, and this involves ensuring that data remains accurate, complete, and unaltered. Any unauthorized changes to the data should be detectable, and examples include file checksums or hashing algorithms, which verify that data hasn't been tampered with. So think of integrity as keeping your bank statement correct and ensuring no one can change the amounts or the dates. And then we have availability, and this ensures that data and systems are accessible to authorized users when needed. This means maintaining system uptime and avoiding disruptions caused by hardware failure, cyber attacks, or natural disasters. And examples include redundancy systems, data backups, and denial of service protection measures. So consider availability like ensuring the power is always on in a critical hospital system to where it must be operational 24-7. All right, next, let's move on to privacy. So privacy in the digital age is a growing concern, especially with the proliferation of social media, file sharing, and online communication tools. So let's break it down into its key areas. And the first one is social networking sites. So social platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X, they collect vast amounts of user data, and users should be aware of privacy settings and understand how their personal data is shared or sold to third parties. Then we have email and instant messaging. So emails and instant messaging, they often contain sensitive information. So use encryption technologies like PGP or pretty good privacy for emails and end-to-end -end encryption for messaging apps to ensure that communications remain private. Then we have file sharing. So services like Google Drive or Dropbox are used to share files, but proper access controls are crucial. So encrypt sensitive files before sharing and ensure only authorized individuals can access them. Next, we have personally identifiable information, or PII. And this includes data like your name, address, phone number, and social security number. So protecting PII is critical because it can be used for identity theft. Always ensure that organizations handle PII with proper encryption and strict access control. And then we have government regulations. So the General Data Protection Regulation is a European law that governs how personal data should be protected. GDPR, this mandates that organizations need explicit consent from users to collect their data and that users have the right to know how their data is used. Users also have the right to request the deletion of their data. And then we have what is called cookie consent. And this is a common requirement of GDPR where websites must get user consent before tracking their online behavior behavior with cookies. All right, now let's look at the AAA framework, which stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. And these concepts help control access to resources and monitor activity. So the first A is authentication, and this is the process of verifying the identity of a user or system. And there are different types of authentication. You have single factor authentication, where this involves just one method, like entering a password. You have multi-factor authentication, where this adds more security or requiring two or more verification methods, such as entering a password and providing a fingerprint. Then we have what is called single sign-on, and this allows users to log in once and gain access to multiple related systems or services without needing to re-enter credentials for each one. So for example, multi-factor authentication is common in banking apps where you need a password and a one-time code sent to your phone in order to access your information. 
Next, we have what is called authorization, and this determines what resources a user or system can access and what actions they are allowed to perform. And then up under authorization, we have permissions. So administrator accounts, they tend to have high level permissions that allow them to change settings, install software or access all files and user accounts that tend to have limited permissions to reduce the risk of accidental or malicious system changes. And then we have a concept called least privilege model. So this security concept means that users should have the minimum permissions necessary to perform their job. By limiting access, organizations can reduce the risk of insider threats or accidental damage. So for instance, a marketing team member should not have access to confidential financial reports if it's not a part of their job function. And then we have our final A, which is accounting. This refers to tracking and logging user actions. This includes maintaining logs of login attempts, location tracking, and web browser history to ensure all activities can be monitored and reviewed later if necessary. Logs, they help in auditing and can be crucial in tracking down suspicious behavior. So for example, an organization might track login attempts to detect unusual patterns, such as failed login attempts from different countries, which might indicate a hacking attempt. All right. And the last concept in this framework is non-repudiation, which ensures that a person cannot deny their actions or communications after the fact. Non-repudiation is closely tied to authentication by verifying someone's identity with secure methods such as digital signatures. It becomes harder for that person to claim that they didn't perform the action. And digital signatures and encryption, they are key tools used to guarantee non-repudiation. Also, by strictly controlling and logging access to systems and files, authorization policies also support non-repudiation. If only authorized users can access a file, it is easier to prove who did what and when. And then proper logging and tracking, this also helps with non-repudiation. So logs provide detailed records of actions performed by users, and since they are time-stamped and immutable, they serve as evidence in case of disputes. So for example, in financial transactions, non-repudiation mechanisms are critical to ensure that users cannot deny authorizing a transaction. All right, so let's summarize the key points we've covered in this lesson. So confidentiality, integrity, and availability, these are the pillars of the CIA triad, ensuring data is protected, accurate, and accessible. Privacy, this involves understanding the risks posed by social networking, email, file sharing, and the handling of personally identifiable information with laws like GDPR setting clear standards. Then we have the AAA framework, authentication, authorization, and accounting. This plays a central role in controlling access to resources, tracking user actions, and ensuring non-repudiation. Authentication, this verifies who a user is through methods like passwords, multi-factor authentication, and single sign-on. Authorization, this ensures users can only access what they need based on permission levels. And accounting, this monitors and logs user activity for security auditing. And then we have non-repudiation. This ensures that individuals cannot deny actions or communications that they have initiated, supporting accountability and trust in digital systems. Now, understanding these security concepts is vital for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam and real world cybersecurity. By mastering these fundamentals, you will be prepared to protect systems, data, and users from evolving threats. All right. So with all of that being said, let's do some check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following best defines the confidentiality aspect of the CIA triad? Is it ensuring data is accurate and unaltered? Is it ensuring data is accessible to authorized users? Is it ensuring only authorized users can access the data? Or is it ensuring all data is available at all times? And the correct answer is it ensures only authorized users can access the data. So confidentiality is one of the key principles of the CIA triad, which ensures that sensitive information is only accessible to those who are authorized to view it. Protecting confidentiality typically involves encryption, access controls, and other security measures. Next question, which of the following is an example of personally identifiable information? Is it the color of a user's favorite shirt? Is it a user's IP address during web browsing? Is it a user's social security number? Or is it the operating system on a user's computer? 
And of course, the answer is it is a user's social security number. So personally identifiable information, this refers to any information that can be used to identify an individual uniquely. Examples include social security numbers, full names, and birth dates. So protecting personally identifiable information is essential for maintaining privacy and adhering to regulations like GDPR. And our final question, which of the following describes non-repudiation in a security context? Is it preventing unauthorized changes to data? Is it ensuring that data is accessible to authorized users? Is it verifying that a user cannot deny their actions? Or is it preventing unauthorized access to data? And the correct answer is it is verifying that a user cannot deny their actions. So non-repudiation, this ensures that once an action is taken, such as sending an email or making a transaction, the user cannot deny that they perform that action. This is commonly enforced through digital signatures and logging mechanisms.